In this video, I will be explaining on how we can use second derivative test to determine the nature of the stationary point. In the first video, you have learned that when dy dx is more than zero, we know that the graph y is strictly increasing. And hence, we know that dy dx actually refers to the rate of change of y with respect to x when x equals to a. So we look at the square y d over the x square, we know that it can be written as the rate of change of dy dx with respect to x. And now there are three cases in which we will explore. The first one is when the square y over the x square is more than zero. Why do we say that it is a stationary point? Because remember, stationary point refers to a smiley face. So when we have a smiley face, the gradient changes from negative to zero to positive. The change of gradient is actually positive and we know that the gradient is increasing. So when the gradient is increasing, we know that the square y over the x square is more than zero. Next, when we look at maximum point, it is a set phase. So set phase refers to the gradient is positive through zero negatives. The change of gradient is negative. And we know that the gradient is decreasing. So when the gradient is decreasing, we say that the square y over the x square is less than zero. However, when the square y over the x square equals to zero, we cannot say that it is a point of inflection. No, we cannot say that. Okay, so this is the counter example. When given the following curve, right, when I have y equals to x cubed, y equals to x to the power, power of four, y equals to negative x to the power of 4, we can see that at the origin, right, the nature of the point is different. When y equals to x cubed, the point actually has a stationary point of inflection. When y equals to x to the power of 4, the point is actually a minimum point. And when y equals to negative x to the power of 4, the point is actually a maximum point. Hence, we would need to use the first derivative test for confirmation. Having learned these two tests, you must be wondering when do we use the first derivative test and when do we use the second derivative test? In most cases, right, you should just use the first derivative test since we from the test, right, we will know that is it a minimum point, is it a maximum point, or is it a stationary point of inflection. And also, sometimes it is just very tedious to derive the second derivative test. And for easier manipulation sake, right, we usually try to factorize dy ds first before use, checking for the sign. I will show you how can this be done later. And to emphasize again, if the question requires use to meet deduction from the second derivative test, some, sometimes you will just say, hence, so, blah, blah, blah. You, the, you must be aware that the test can only confirm a maximum point or a minimum point. Okay, let us now look at example 3. Example 3 asks us to find the x coordinate of the turning points on the graph of y equals to x squared e to the power of negative x. 
and determine whether is it a maximum point or minimum point. So in this case, there is no point, no point of inflection. So yes, we can use either the first one or the second one. I will show you both methods in a short while. So the first step is of course to find dy dx and we can find dy dx using product rule. And you will and you will see that your dy dx equals to x e to the power of negative x 2 minus x. It is actually easier to factorize uh, because later on I will show you a quicker method. Okay, next we, of course, we want to find what are the x coordinate of the stationary point first, right? So we let dy dx equals to 0 and from there, you have x equals to 0 or x equals to 2. Hence, you can see that in a fully factorized form, it is easier to find the x values already. And next, from your own level knowledge, you know that you need to conduct two tests, okay? One when x equals to 0 and the other one when x equals to 2. Let us now focus when x equals to 0. So when x equals to 0, we know that the sign of dy dx is of course 0. And so what is the value to be sub in for 0 negative? So you can just sub in negative 0 0.01 and positive 0 0.01 into your dy dx and you will realize that the sign is negative and positive respectively so from there you can tell that the slope initially is a negative slope then zero then a positive slope so it is a minimum point and actually here, I want to show you all a quick, a faster way on how to check for the sign of dy dx. And the condition for this right is that dy dx must be in fully factorized form. So you know that when x equals to negative 0 0.01, we know that this is negative. We know that this is always positive. And we know that this is positive. So negative multiplied by positive multiplied by positive the sign is always negative. So you can see that without using calculator to key in the values one by one, right, it is very easy to find out what is the sign of dy dx. Okay, so let us try again for when x equals to 0 0.01. You know that when x equals to 0 0.01, you know that x is positive, e to the power of negative x is always positive. You know that 2 minus x is positive. So positive multiplied by positive multiplied by positive is always positive. Okay, so now I will go through second derivative test with you. Remember, second derivative test requires you to find out what is the square y over the x square. So again, you can use product rule to find out what is the square y over the x square and you will get this. Okay, perform your product rule two times and you will get this. Okay, so to determine the stationary point when x equals to 0, we sub in 0 into d square y over the x square. So you will know that I have dy. So you know that I will have d square y over the x square equals to 2, which is positive. Hence, we know that the point is a minimum turning point when x equals to 2. Okay, so I will leave the other one for you to do yourself. And with this, we have come to the end of e-learning for this section of applications of differentiation.